uh, I want to be respectful of my next guest who's calling into the Rich Eisen show right now. Um, I'm going to remove the Rich Eisen show mug, which, as you know, is a very difficult thing for me to do because I'm all about the branding. There is an I in Rich and Eisen, um, and I'm a team player on that front. I'm going to remove that mug and place front and center my Bilf Life mug that I received with the Men in Blazers uh, crest on one side. My Bilf Life mug is placed directly in front of me, uh, and the gentleman who provided me with this uh, bauble, uh, the co-host of Men in Blazers uh, with his friend Michael Davies, our friend Roger Bennett back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Rog? Oh, Rich Eisen, better for hearing your voice, like the rest of America. Yes. Yes. What do you think of my mug? That my choice oh. of mug here, Roger. That's out of respect for you and our follically challenged experiences in life. You're a beautiful man. We do say, Rich Eyes, and baldness is truth. Baldness is truth. It is rise true. Up, true. Oh, it mighty is. bald nation, rise up. You're one of our leaders. We march behind you. Well, congrats on the return of the Premier League, sir. Um, you must have been overjoyed to hear that they were going to give this a whirl, give it a go. And uh, it, it appears that uh, despite um, the lack of fans, that everything went um, as planned, correct? Thank God, yes, after a 100-day unplanned break uh, caused by the pandemic, the greatest global sporting telenovela the British uh, nation loves, the English Premier League, with its pantheon of heroes and villains, uh, is back. Uh, and, uh, you know, the world was watching, including, I'd bet, Rich, every single commissioner no doubt. of every major sports league in America to see... How it was it enough? Would it be enough with this new fanless reality? And it was different uh, to watch the players trot around empty stadia. There was definitely, from an American perspective, less theatric. Suddenly, with no crowd to play for, there was no kind of rolling on the floor in agony. There was less celebrations. <laughs> the players still trying to get to real match fitness. The play at times was patchy, and there was fake crowd noise pumped in to the broadcast, so it was a bit like an Atlanta Falcons home game, but it was enough. It was a, there's a manager, Jurgen Klopp, of Liverpool Football Club, who said that when we were kids, we grew up and fell in love with the game, and that game could be basketball, it could be um, gridiron football, but he went football, soccer. He said, we fell in love with the game when we were kids, and yes, the spectacle of pro sports has surpassed the game, with its theatre, but the game was enough, Rich, just to watch and be thrilled and connected to that global conversation again. It was magnificent. So um, I, I want to get to the fan noise being pumped in uh, in a second because that absolutely fascinates me, and it is something that I think, uh, even though you know people might think tongue firmly planted in cheek, I think it is something that the NFL is going to be taking a close look at as other North American sports here. What, what about the results? Uh, I know uh, you're an Evertonian, correct? That's a correct statement. I am. You're a remarkable man. So Everton, I come from Liverpool, which is like mm -hmm. football mad, like Indiana, high school basketball, Texas. Right. Football. Everton are like the Mets of Liverpool. Yes. There is another team, the Yankees, Liverpool, <laughs> league leading Liverpool. I am cursed to walk the earth as a, you know, Cleveland Browns fans will probably relate to my suffering. But yes, go on. No, but uh, the result uh, that Everton placed uh, oh. uh, against Liverpool, uh, which had an opportunity had they gotten past Everton um, with, a, with a proper result or an expected result, an opportunity to wrap things up uh, for the first time in 30 years with another win this week and yet um your your side stood in the way correct Ron? yeah so everton or it's a bit like i guess auburn war eagle to liverpool's alabama liverpool are a mighty team mm -hmm. they used to when i was growing up win titles by right i mean they weren't almost my whole childhood was watching them bring trophy after trophy back to the city everton oh, we've had our moments but but not so much. And what's remarkable is Liverpool have not won a title in 30 long years, mm -hmm. 30 fantastic years, some would say. And then FSG, Fenway Sports Group, the Boston Red Sox owners, brought Liverpool in October 2010. And it took them a little time. It wasn't effortless, but they got their heads, uh, John Henry and his team, around the unique competitive advantages, some of what, which they'd mastered with the Red Sox in terms of identifying and recruiting and scouting differently, 
uh, to other teams. And they have, year on year, over the past uh, five or six years, a very remarkable leader, a manager, German, called Jürgen Klopp, who's mm-hmm. like a Teutonic care bear. He's like Jim Harbour in his enthusiasm, but he actually keeps winning. And he has led Liverpool to just six, uh, five points now from the title, uh, which is a remarkable achievement. The Red Sox 2004 achievement was, you know, breaking the curse, a remarkable sporting thing. This Liverpool achievement, and it could happen as soon as Wednesday when Liverpool play Crystal Palace, if the results go the right way. If FSG, this American ownership group, can drag Liverpool back to the promised land, it will be as great an achievement as the Red Sox but lived out with the whole world watching. And so huge, huge respect. It's an incredible American achievement in the global game. The dulcet tones of Roger Bennett here on the Rich Eisen Show, co-host of Men and Blazers, along with our buddy Michael Davies right here on the program. So uh, what else do we need to know uh, about this return? Uh, because Christian it is Pulisic. correct. He, he scored for Chelsea, and um, and and that's good news for for all of us, right? Writ large, it's Roger. Good news for the for America. It's a remarkable moment. It's nice to feel good about something, even if it's just for a minute. Yeah. Christian Pulisic, twenty-one year old, from Hershey, Pennsylvania, who moved to Chelsea Football Club in the Premier League, uh, and this is his first season. He started poorly, struggled. And then out of nowhere, around October, just started scoring. When you watch him play, he plays a little bit like a point guard um, in the NBA, just finding slithers of space, changing pace, incredible burst of speed, uh, and is able to mine crevices of space and really hurt opponents. He was then injured, has not played since January uh, the 1st with an abductor, abductor strain. Um, and what's remarkable is he came, didn't start, came into a game when his team were 1-0 down uh, the weekend in the 55th minute. And within four minutes, he made a run to the far post, jabbed the ball home, his seventh of the season. And it was, I was so happy for him. And just the relief, the joy that he experienced, you know, struggled, then dazzled, then fallen off. And now he's back contributing again from an American football perspective. He's our Lord and Saviour. From a world football perspective, he's just another young, good player fighting for minutes. But it was a lovely moment. And also at the weekend, a 17-year-old from Westchester, New York, Gio Reyna, a beautiful assist in the Bundesliga. So it's great from an American perspective for a moment. You know, whatever religion you are, whatever ethnicity, whatever political view you have, the joy of sports, Rich, you can put it all aside for a moment, just connect feel wonderful together, and that's uh, that's what Christian Pulisic allowed us to do at well, the weekend. Well, he's also a, a salesman as well. He's trying to get he's trying to get me on board for Chelsea. I have right here in front of me. Um, he sent me a note after I talked about an MLS playoff game at length on this program. Uh, Roger, he sent me an autographed Chelsea jersey right here for me to hold oh. up in a moment. I guess just like this to help promote the fact that he's overseas and he's crushing it and. And well, I've got it right it's here. No He's... Bilf mug. It's no Bilf mug, but it is something. You know? <laughs> well, it looks great with it paired with the Bilf Life mug. You should see it right now, Roger. It is impressive. It's yeah, very nice. Know, it's, a, it's a joy. There was always a worry that this may be a Frederick Weiss kind of uh, <laughs> first year for Christian. He's, with, with goals like that, he's shaken that. He's not quite the <laughs> superstar that America demands, but he's doing amazing, and I'm incredibly proud. Great, great reference to the dreadful New York Nick, nicknamed the French pastry by the tabloid media. <laughs> great reference, Roger. Gosh, you are. That was fantastic. Um, let's get into the crowd noise uh, aspect yeah. of it, because um, if I'm not mistaken, fans of the sport um, in the UK have an ability to watch the matches as as they're being played with just nothing, just the the au naturel. And then another where crowd noise is being pumped in and controlled by who? Who is the individual who has this job, Roger? Can you find him and interview him on Men in Blazers, can you, you find know, this using, person? They're using um, crowd noises developed by our friends at EA Sports FIFA, a remarkable game where they go every year to such incredible detective lengths to almost track down like musicologists every single chant from every single stadium in every single game. So 
the it's a really through the looking glass moment where a game which is based on a sport actually is injecting itself to bring a reality to the sport itself and it's needed you know the bundesliga came back first um it was the german bundesliga the first league back and the the first game was a massive one dortmund against schalke let's just say two teams who were german and everybody was watching the whole world tuned in and it was like watching a really good pickup game in the park. You could hear every single shout from every single player, the coaches screaming. When the, the passes were here, it had a, that kind of rubbery ping uh, that you hear when you walk past a really good game of pickup in the park. When they scored, there was like a, a weird silence, just the ball hitting. You'd hear the ripple in the back of the net. And instead of that crowd noise, that theatre, that epic moment of human poetry that is just a delirious sporting moment. You heard nothing. And back then, the players were social distancing, so they'd freeze. They'd run toward each other to hug each other and celebrate and then freeze six feet away from each other. We have John Oliver on our show, and he said, Mm. watching that game, it was like being in the worst discotheque in Antwerp, watching their goal (laughs) celebrations, just six men dancing on their own. And so they realized they needed fake crowd noise for the broadcast just to roil the blood, to to, to surge and manipulate the emotions. Sport, in the end of the day, Rich, as you know better than I do, it's just incredible human theater. And so the fake crowd noise is a a work in progress. There's a uh, one... Uh, bloke who's mixing it yeah. into the production. It's it's nearly there, but it's enough off if you watch enough sports. You yes. know the you know every you can know what you can shut your eyes and follow along with the game just by the crowd noise. It's slightly off. It's slightly uncalibrated. I think they should just use the Seinfeld laugh track <laughs> instead, or or, or, or or have other special effects. Why stop with just fake sound? They I could agree. Have Godzilla rise above the stadium and or a dragon sweeping over it and just to signal half time swooping over and burning the the place down. I'm all for the CGI. When you're a little bit in, Rich, you should be all in. I agree. And and well, very well done, Mike. <laughs> See, it's very well done. See, you should I've be the one. I've actually done this stuff live. What do you We've mean? We've added sound. What do you mean? Fox Sports has added sound forever. We had a sweetener behind us. What? For sports. What yes, Rich. For what? What for event? every sport we ever did. For highlights? Or... We used to do it for sweetening highlights constantly. Oh, I thought you meant live no, sporting no, 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 events. No, but we oh, did actually gosh. do it for one event that was just recent that we were talking about. See, here's the, what, the what I run, think we Chase. should do, um, Raj, is I yeah. think, though, we should take this to the next level. We yeah. should, we should, w- let's do that. I think they should pump it in into the actual stadium. That yeah. they should act that 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 home field advantage certainly in the NFL as it's coming, like they should be able to figure out what the average noise would be for a certain moment in the game and be allowed to pump it up, and certainly be allowed to in the Premier League whatever chanting whatever is normally happening in the stadium pump it in. Oh, the referee's a wanker, Rich. You want that? You want that? You want that? All? You want that pumped in? Eh? Well, yes, that too, Roger. That too. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a contro- <laughs> I will say it's a controversial step. You know, football is an intensely local game in England, and the fan base are so loyal, just generations of memories. And to watch football without those fans there, but with the fan noise, you know, it raises questions for many of the fans like why did we bother in the first place like there, there are genuine fears that we are we're all replaceable and to what they, they they have these english fans they zoom them in they have you know 20 lucky fans are zoomed into the scoreboard and you're watching these kind of uh, many of them aging tattooed uh one-time hooligans sitting sadly in their living room just completely defanged as they watch their beautiful <laughs> club from afar you can tell they're itching for a fight most of them and i just watching these zoomed in fans like massive on the scoreboard and i'm like i i it's just the greatest risk in sports i've ever seen rich because i know their mentality and where you have the first ever zoomed in premier league fans yes the first ever premier uh, zoomed in streakers uh are going to be coming <laughs> incredibly the, the, the two things in my mind go hand in hand so it, it was worth watching if only for that america well they got so that needs to be vetted i'll have to agree <laughs> we, we should we should definitely we have to vet that uh roger i just love chatting with you man love i miss it i miss it but i'm uh-huh. thrilled that that uh that the premier league is back on on nbcsn nbc sports and more and men in blazers you've got something to talk about 
which so many people need, and you're you know, so great at is, talking about it. it. Rich, it is. It's that global conversation, that connectivity, that no matter what you're feeling in that moment, high or low, we can all be connected to the same thing for 90 minutes, that most important, least important thing. That's what's wonderful, and so are you. It's a joy to be with you. Thank you're you. the greatest mensch in the sports business, uh, and uh, best to you and your family. You Same Harry. to you, Roger. Thank you. Same to you. At Raj Bennett with uh, two N's, two T's on Twitter. Thanks, the great, guys. You guy, great Roger Bennett. There he is. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.